Good morning, Potsdam United Methodist Church. Welcome on Christ the King Sunday, November 26, 2023. Today we are celebrating Thanksgiving Sunday. And I am Reverend Heidi Chamberlain. As always, it is my profound privilege to be here with this amazing congregation in this place. Um, our joys and concerns included reminding uh, the congregants that on Saturday, this coming Saturday, um, December 2nd from 2 to 3.30, we will be having Elf 
and cookies for our youngsters in the community. It is my understanding that the jolly old elf himself will be here for a visit with the kids and to hear their heart's desire. Uh, we'll have some story time, we'll decorate sugar cookies. So please let folks know out there that that's coming up and do come and be part of the community of Potsdam United Methodist Church. This morning, um, I'd like to start with our call to worship, which is responsive. So if you could please join your heart with mine and be in prayer as we begin this time together. As God has given us such great abundance, let us share with others. Open our hearts and our hands today, Lord, to help others in need. As God has blessed each of our lives, let us be a blessing to others. Prepare us for ministries of hope and healing, gracious God. The harvest time has come. Let us gather up our resources, the abundance with which God has blessed us, and let us use these gifts to help all in need. Amen. Our Psalter reading this morning is Psalm 65, and you'll find it in your red hymnal. It's on page 789. That is our responsive. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. To you who hear prayer, all flesh shall come because of their sins. When our transgressions prevail over us, you forgive them. Blessed are those whom you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house your holy temple. By dread deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. Who is the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas? and who by your strength established the mountains being guided, girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the, their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at earth's farthest bounds are afraid at your signs. You make the morning and the evening resound with joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide its grain, for so you have prepared it. Your water, its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. Crown the year with your bounty. The tracks of your chariot drip with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness drip, the hills gird themselves with joy, the meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with grain, they shout and sing together for joy. Our opening prayer is here in your bulletin. And if you could please join your voice with mine in the, with these words. God of the harvest, we come this day celebrating the multitude of blessings that you have poured into our lives. 
Help us live in gratitude for those blessings and to share our talents and resources with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first hymn is in our red hymnal. It's number 694. Come ye thankful people, come. When you find your place, please stand, whether in body or in spirit. Please be seated. I've included the litany of thanksgiving in this week's time of worship. You'll find that it goes into the next page. If you could please join your voices with mine. With joy, we celebrate the bounteous gifts of God. Thanks be to God for all God's mercies. When we were people who lived in darkness, God gave us the light of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for the light of Jesus Christ. When we were confused and turned our backs on God, God brought us the witness of the disciples and apostles. Thanks be to God for the witnesses of the faithful people. All creation celebrates the love of God. Thanks be to God for the magnificence of creation. Out of God's love, we have received abundant blessings. Thanks be to God for the awesome blessings. Rejoice, people of God, the harvest of hope has been given for us. 
Thanks and praise be to God for all that we have been given. May we be those who would return thanks by the ways in which we give for others. Praise be to God always for God's abundant love. Amen. I'm so pleased that we have a choir anthem this morning. Thank you, Krista. Two readings from the New Testament this morning. The first is 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 1. The point, I'm sorry. That's what I said. I'm kidding. 6 through 15. It says one in the bulletin. I do apologize. I didn't. You can't go backwards. All right. Let me try that again. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. 
Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The second reading is from Luke 17, 11 through 19. Jesus cleanses 10 lepers. These kind of made me teary when I read them to get ready for this morning. This one's very moving. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God for the people of God. I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that cries each time that scripture comes up. I am going to truly think about thanksgiving. And I am going to stand on holy ground. And be thankful for all the good gifts that are part of my life. What do you think? Yes? Matthew chapter 25, verse 40 tells us, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. I've cried a lot. You're not alone in that. I've cried a lot this month. This last month has been filled with news articles on nearly every news server asking for support for many causes in our various communities across the country, many agencies that provide assistance to the poorest among us are finding themselves nearly flat broke. And it's not yet Christmas. It seems that resources are spread thinner and thinner each year. It seems that resources have been spread thinner and thinner for many years. I came across the social, a post on social media this week, which reminded me, it's one I posted many years ago and it popped up in my memories. Want to keep the Christ in Christmas? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, forgive the guilty, welcome the unwanted, care for the ill, love your enemies, and do unto others as you would have done unto you. Whew, wow, it's heavy stuff. 
It's burdensome. It challenges us and it stretches us. And then Jesus says, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, who are members of my family, you did it to me. So to quote one of my television favorites, Sheldon Cooper on the blessed Big Bang Theory, Bazinga. Theologian Elaine Pagel says Jesus' words are the basis for a radical new social structure based on the God-given dignity and value of every human being. Human beings are not to be abused and tortured, not because they are wonderful. My guess is that many, if not most, incarcerated people are not terribly fun to be around. They are not to be abused and humiliated and tortured because Jesus said he is there with them. What you do to prisoners, you do to me. Kind of shakes you up a little bit, doesn't it? There is a foundational dignity and worth to everyone on the margins. Everyone who is different. Everyone who is not like us. And our work is to live out God's love to them and with them because God and Jesus are already with them. I'm reminded over and over in my own family and other families of people that I am close with, that there are so many subsets of our culture and our community that are marginalized. I guess the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart are those with mental illness. Folks want to other that group of people. Oh, I've got to be so careful. No, God and Jesus are already with them. What about you? Truly, I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Now, if you want to see what this looks like, just look to the repeated examples of Pope Francis. In his ministry as the Roman Catholic Pope, he has made a point of demonstrating and living out what this text means in real everyday life. Not long ago, he had showers installed for the street people in St. Peter's Square. Basically out on his front porch, you know what I mean? About the same time, he auctioned off gifts people had made for him with the proceeds going to help the homeless in Rome. Even the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church knows that he is but one person and cannot heal the world, but he is working in the corner of the world where he is for immediate needs. Now, of course, his job takes that mission and ministry further. But in that place where he lives, in that place where you live, we are called on. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. What this passage says about our faith is absolutely central. First, this passage tells us that God is not isolated, living off somewhere in a far, on a far-off throne, disinterested in us or what we do. God is with us in all things, no matter what. God is here in the messiness and ambiguity of life in the absolute craziness around us. God is found in the face of our neighbor, in the lost, the least, in those on the edges, in the midst of the community of faith when there is loss and grief 
God is there. Second, this passage reminds us that our faith is not dependent upon creeds, who is right, who is wrong, who is in, who is out, what we believe or do not believe about almost all of our rules, Jesus said absolutely nothing. But Jesus did say, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Who are members of my family. Finally, this passage tells us that God wants us, each and every single one of us. It's personal. God wants to save our souls and to give us the gift of deep, true, and authentic human life. God wants to touch our hearts with love. God wants us to care about this world God created and about the people in it. And in the every in and in the very end, God wants us to know that to love is to live. That's all. Just that simple. Living a life of thanksgiving. Thanks filled giving. Every day. Not just once a year. Not just one week a year but every single day as we are going about our work, we are to be filled with thanks. And we are to share our thankfulness and those things that we have, that have been brought into our lives without giving it another thought. Because thanksgiving is a way of living. Thanksgiving is an act of faith. Thanksgiving is a way of loving and love. Love is the basis of every word that Jesus preached to the people now and then and always and forever. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. My prayer this week, in this week where we have celebrate thank celebrated Thanksgiving, that we change the lowercase g to an uppercase g and remember that it's thanks and giving. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is Again, in our red hymnal, it's number 188, Christ is the world's light. When you find your place, please stand and give your thanks to God.
Please be seated. I love that we come together each week and before the camera begins, we share our joys and our concerns. I'm also very aware, and I say this almost every week, but I'm very aware that not everything is spoken aloud. And so we lift those prayer requests that were voiced and those that were unvoiced into God's able hands as we pray together. Let us pray. Sacred God of the harvest, blessed son of abundance, Holy Spirit of thanksgiving, we are thankful for all that you give us, for all that you do for us, for all that you teach us. Thank you for guiding us to live our lives in your will, in your purpose, in your plan for us. We have got, you have gathered us together to be your people. You have brought forth from each one of us awareness of the gifts and ways in which we can serve you. You have blessed our lives with the wealth of resources and spirit. We ask that you set us on pathways of service. Be with us as we witness to your generous and lavish compassion. Help us sow seeds of peace and justice that those wonderful resources will grow and spread in your world. And in doing so, set us free, both from greed and from want, that all may live in justice and well-being. Give us courage and always an awareness of your presence. May our lives be ever be enlisted toward this end. And now in this moment, let us open our lives to you in every way as we pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The other thing that we have been very mindful of, especially in the month of November, are the gifts and tithes that we offer each week. The pledges of financial support that we have made to this community and for the physical support that we give to this community through our gifts and graces. And so, again, I say to you, respond to God's invitation and enjoy, offer your gifts. I ask the usher to come forward.
Please rise. take a moment to pray in one voice our prayer of dedication understand that we are dedicating not just the contents of the plate but we are dedicating ourselves to be gifts offered in service let us pray ever present god with this offering we present also ourselves all that we have been and all that we are all that we shall become and are resolved to walk in your way. Accept us in our offering, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our final hymn is in our red hymnal. It's number 715, Rejoice, the Lord is King. As we prepare to go forward to live the church and ministry to all the world, let us hear these words of benediction, but also remember 
to stay for a little bit after worship this morning to have some coffee and to decorate the sanctuary together. Let us pray. Out of God's bounty, you have received much. Now go in peace, bringing the good news of God's love and mercy to all people. Give of your energy, your resources, and your time in service to God by serving God's world. And the people say, Amen. Oh.